Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm stupid. I think we already knew that, but I have decided that I am going to attempt to read the entire Folk of the Air trilogy in one day. Not even a, a 24 hour period, but like perhaps 10 hours, I'm gonna attempt to read all three of these books. So I've already read The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King before, but I feel like to go into The Queen of Nothing, I really need to get more information into the background of the story, if that makes sense. I don't remember a lot of the minute details that I'm hoping Holly Black is gonna tie into the rest of the series, so I just decided what the hell why don't I read all three of these books I didn't intend initially to do this all in one day but it just it's it's happening also you'll probably notice by the title of this video this is a new series I'm doing on my channel called series squared it's a series in which I read series of books so I thought it was aptly named and to be honest with you I just like naming things that's who I am I enjoy cohesion so this is something that I'm going to be doing on my channel periodically in which I will pick up completed series of books and read them for an entire video I want to get my reactions on each book individually, give you guys a little bit of a wrap up at the end of each book. I'm just really excited to get into it. I'm excited that Folk of the Air trilogy is going to be my first foray into the series on my channel. So I'm scared because I just, I don't know how long this is actually going to take, but I'm also just incredibly excited as a series that I really like. I know The Queen of Nothing has been getting mixed reviews. So I'm excited to find out for myself if that is the case, if, if The Queen of Nothing really is as lackluster as people say it is. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for today. I hope you guys are excited. Probably Probably gonna get a little loopy and delirious and add some like TikTok references in here so all around it should be a fun time. It is 12.38 right now. I'm thinking that I can finish this book by 3.30. I think that might be ambitious but I think I can do it. These books in general really aren't that long so I feel like it should be doable right? This is like 400 pages. Can I get it done? in two and a half hours. Probably not, but I'm gonna try and I'll update you guys as I go. Okay, so I am on chapter five and I had a couple thoughts. Um, the first is that whenever Jude is at the first court gathering, she does point out that she doesn't mind Cardin's tail, which hope that doesn't come up in the third book because ew. And then I just, I think what made me enjoy this book so much the first time is the fact that Jude so obviously wants to be a part of the Fae world, but she's so conflicted. And I love that it's brought up so immediately and so strongly. I feel like oftentimes it's hard to understand the motivations of characters in fantasy books or in situations like this, but I understood Jude's motivations so quickly in The Cruel Prince, which I think is what makes this book so strong and makes Jude such a relatable character. I didn't really tell you guys what this book is about because I just assumed everybody knew, but it's essentially about a girl named Jude who was taken to the Fae world by her sister's father, and her older sister's father murders her mom and her actual father. So she is in the Fae world, and it's difficult because this man who killed her parents also raised her so she does have love for him and he did raise her in a good way and she also just longs to be a part of this world and uh, I don't want to get too like philosophical if you will but I just think it's so interesting seeing the actual human world in comparison to the fey world and we don't see many glimpses of it right at the beginning but that juxtaposition of her being in the human world as a child and then being in the fey world a little bit later on it's just so interesting and I think a lot of the time when I was reading this book, I was just like, you could just go to the human world, you know, like you don't have to deal with this, especially since we know later on that Vivi does go to the human world and, and doesn't want to be a part of the fae world. It's interesting and I think can be something that's applicable in our lives, if that makes sense. And that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get too philosophical, but I think it's interesting that all of these things are weighing so heavily on Jude and she really wants to be accepted. She wants to be someone who means something in this world when she could easily leave it and go into the human world. And I think it's such a fascinating idea, or at least it kind of, I don't want to say it reminds me of YouTube, but it's sometimes when I, I just get so embroiled in creating or embroiled in like one thing in my life. And then when you take a step back, you're like, wait, I don't even have to be involved with this thing at all. Its importance is something that I'm putting on it. Same with Jude putting so much importance on her place in the fake world when there's other places she could be. It's so interesting to me. I just, I love it. I think it's fascinating. And again, it just, it makes her all the more relatable because who wouldn't want to try to fight for power in this society? I think it's so much more interesting than the human world. And I, I like that Holly Black doesn't shy away from showing that 
and kind of getting you to realize that like she could leave at any time, but she just doesn't because she wants to be there. So that's pretty much it for right now. Uh, I just wanted to like put that note in there because I think that's the essence of what makes this so interesting to me. We all want to be someone, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get back to it because I don't have much time to read this. Okay, so I am on page 100 slash chapter 12 and I don't have that much to say, I guess, other than I just forget about the little clever moments in this book and it just, I love it so much. Like the time when, and is it Nikasia? I don't know how to say it, but I'm just gonna say Nikasia. I'm gonna mispronounce a lot of things in this video, but when Nikasia and Valerian and the whole gang is together and they force Jude to eat fairy fruit and she's like kind of out of her mind and is susceptible to answering questions. When Carden pricks her finger, get you a man who protects you. I just love them so much. I also kind of forgot about the whole scene where Jude is trying to fight and show her prowess and she wants to be a knight so badly and I knew that but I didn't remember the scene where she is like standing up to Carden for the first time and he is just so into it. You know he's like upset but he's into it. Love that too. So I'm just, I'm loving this book. I'm making like pretty decent time. It's like 140 and I'm 100 pages in. So will I finish this by 3.30? Probably not. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. It's good. To stop for a nap? Perhaps I did. I'm at page 212 and it is 3.30. So I think my updated plan is to finish this by five. <laughs> and you just killed Valerian. I probably should have said there would be spoilers, but you know what? If you've if you've really taken this long to read The Cruel Prince, I, I can't help you. I don't really have any other thoughts except for that Carden definitely loves Jude. I'm still so out of it. Well, wow. I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna finish this and then I'll get back to you. So I finished it. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like upon reread, it's equally as good. I will say the only thing that I'm frustrated with upon reread is, is the fact that I feel like Carton is less clever than I thought that he was. I love his cruel demeanor. I understand why Jude's into him. I just, I don't know, I feel like I remembered his character difference, so that's like the main thing. I feel like my updates for this book were pretty trash, and I'm hoping that they're gonna be better for the next two books, but I enjoyed this. It's still a five-star read for me. Still really enjoy this. I think that it sets the groundwork perfectly for the series, and I like the twist at the end, which I'm not gonna spoil, even though this is kind of like a spoilery vlog. I like that the twist in the end of this book is something that is very much hinted at, but you really can't guess it unless you've read this book before and I really I liked that because I feel like oftentimes you can see things coming from a mile away and while I don't think it's like hard to guess plot twist you definitely aren't given any insight into what Jude's thinking when things are happening. I mean you are but she's misleading you with her thoughts and I like that and it makes a lot of sense. You would think that we'd get more foreshadowing and more I don't know direction but if you recall, there's a chapter near the front of the book when Jude talks directly to us. And so it's not that I would call Jude an unreliable narrator, but I do think that she does do a good job at misleading us. And there's really nothing to lead you to believe that you're being misled. If that makes any sense, probably not. Good shit, really good shit. Enjoying this, enjoyed this. Um, it is, I don't know what time it is. It is 4.45 and I'm officially done with the first book. So how long is The Wicked King? I know it's not that long, 318, 19 pages. So I think this will take me, I wanna say like three-ish hours. And then I think the last book is gonna take me about three hours as well. I think, what time did I start that one? I don't even know. I think the other one took me about three hours. I think this may take me less than three. You know, I don't know. But I'm excited to get into it and hopefully this one will be equally as good. I know that this is most people's favorite book in the series. I think I still prefer The Cruel Prince in my eyes over The Wicked King, although this one's really good too. But I'll be interested to see upon reread which one is better. Okay, welcome to the change of scenery. I have relocated in hopes that I will be perked up and like just excited to read this book. So first, I want to kind of touch on some, some points that I don't feel like I really thought about when I finished the last book. So I think the first thing that I really want to touch on is the fact that I forget how dynamic and complex the relationship is between Carden and Jude. You get this sort of like childhood banter and bullying in the first book in which Carden is just trying to kind of stay alive and at the very end we do get information into why he hates Jude so much and I actually kind of forgot the reasons. I thought it was just because he really is a cruel person but his jealousy towards Jude and the way that she was raised when no one really cared for him makes a lot of sense and again it's just Holly Black doing this thing where she gets you to understand the characters and it's it's not just oh well this is just the way that things are. She does a great job at explaining why things are the way that they are. I think giving her fake characters some human characteristics it's a fantastic way of kind of not subverting 
doing tropes really but of making her characters a little bit more understandable because I know she does this thing where her fake characters you know they're not human and they are cruel and it makes sense but I like that Cardin isn't just cruel for the sake of being cruel. That being said entering into the second book it's interesting because we get to see how he is coping with the fact that Jude has put him on the throne kind of unbeknownst to him or I mean he, he knows but he had no say in the matter and it's interesting seeing him cope with that and seeing his reaction to Jude. It seems like at the moment he's very cruel and detached. I don't know if it's kind of cheap on Holly's part, but I think it is interesting that she does this thing in the first book where she lets you believe that Cardin is just cruel for the sake of being cruel until we get his internal thoughts near the end of the book. And in this book, we're getting kind of the same thing. Cardin, his actions, he's obviously reactionary in the fact that like he's upset with Jude for the things that she's done to get him on the throne. He obviously is not loving that he is being controlled by her due to the oath that he made at the end of the last book but I think it's fascinating that we're not really getting that much up front from him you know like he's not letting us know his inner thoughts we're not really understanding how he feels towards Jude. Part of me thinks it's kind of cheap because it is sort of following the same path as the first book but I also think it is fascinating knowing what I know about this book and how it ends that it sort of has to be that way because if it's not you can't get these sort of like grand and interesting cliffhangers and like twists and shocking things because if you knew the thoughts of all your characters up front it would make it less interesting but it is frustrating because you just really don't know in this book what Cardin's thinking and I'm reminded of that as I start in on this book. So those are very long-winded thoughts but those are kind of my thoughts up front. I also I will say like I thought that I was gonna hate Taryn more than I do. I do think she's like kind of an idiot but maybe it's because I knew of her betrayal already going into the reread of the series. I just don't feel like I care that much about her. I think she's an idiot and I think Locke's kind of stupid. It's like did I ever think that Jude and Locke would be a thing. I, I know that I did. I really did think that like he was kind of nice and I liked the way he treated her but like upon reread I can definitely see through his bullshit so I'm not really that upset at Taryn and whenever Jude sees Taryn in the beginning of this book when they're at some sort of like I don't know like revel some sort of like not even a ball I don't know a fete a party we have <laughs> Taryn dancing with Locke and Jude remarks that like she wants to talk to her sister and she knows that she can't because they're on opposite sides but I just I don't know I just, I don't know. I don't know why she wants that. Taryn's kind of stupid. That's pretty much all I had to say. I'll get back to you guys when I have more. Just wanted to pop on to say that uh, Cardin stole her ring. Jude's ring. Sneaky, sneaky bastard. Okay, so I remembered something that I meant to tell you guys at the beginning, but is more relevant now. So at the beginning of the book, we are taken into the court and we are seeing kind of the interactions between Jude and Cardin and one of the actions that occurs is that this old member of the court named Grimson who is someone who imbues objects or forges objects that have magical powers he was exiled from King Eldred's court and he comes back and is basically seeking forgiveness for whatever he did to get him banned from the court in the first place and Cardin says like yes sure come back and make me something. In this particular chapter we're shown that Grimson is giving a speech and that he is giving Cardin an earring. And we know that the earring has some sort of magical power. My theory is that this earring is something that is going to help Cardin as a ruler. I mean it would make sense that Grimson would give him something that would be useful so maybe he, maybe Cardin can see the truth in things. Like he can tell when Jude's lying. That was my initial theory. Or he can tell maybe the true intentions behind actions. I'm not really sure but I know that this earring, I just have this feeling that the earring mean something. And I brought this theory to Holly Black when she actually signed my copy of The Wicked King and she said no, that that's not true. But you know, I did I did only say I think the earring tells if people are lying to Cardin, but I actually think it's it's different than that, but I think that the earring means something. But I feel like Boo Boo the Fool if I read The Queen of Nothing and that's not the case, but I really do think that this earring has some sort of meaning and I do think it helps because later on in this book I know that Cardin asks Jude to tell him that she hates him over and over again. And there's gotta be a reason why he like likes that unless he just gets off on hatred. I don't know. I think it would make sense if he could understand the intention behind her words which is that she very much does not hate him but I just thought I'd throw that in there as like a fan theory uh, because that's something that really struck me the first time I read this book. It's like there's got to be a reason for that. I'm hoping it I'm hoping it's not just like a random throw and I hope it's an easter egg. Chapter 16 the power that has the flavor that has the taste unmatched unparalleled love this fucking book so much i just i love it dude carden is end game i mean it's just it's so clear to me and like i said he's all like tell me you hate me dude tell me you hate me i think i think he knows she don't hate him i kind of just don't want to read the rest of the book and i just want to see if my theory is right in queen of nothing but i will power i will power through 
I'll do it. Honestly, I'm never surprised when I reread a Holly Black book because there's so many things that I forget. I totally forgot that Jude ends up being betrayed by one of the people, one of the spies, I guess. I'm realizing that I really didn't tell you guys that much when I was reading the first book, but Jude is a spy for one of the princes of the court and he eventually dies, but she still works with the same people to, I don't know, make sure that everything is in check, making sure that everything's going the way that it should. And one of the members is named Ghost and he ends up betraying Jude. And I just totally forgot about that. I also forgot the fact that Jude ends up going under the sea because that's sort of the whole crux of this book is that Jude's in a position now where she is the right hand to the king, right? She is supposed to be helping Cardin figure out and navigate through being a king. And the main conflict in this book is that the Queen of the Undersea is trying to stake her claim on land now that there is a new and seemingly weaker king on the throne. So she wants her daughter to become married to the king, who's Cardin, obviously. And Cardin really doesn't want this. He has no feelings toward Nikasia, even though he's like been friends with her for a while, I guess. And so that's essentially what has happened up until this point. There was supposed to be a wedding between Taryn and Locke. We knew that there was going to be some sort of like political move made Made at this wedding and it turns out that Jude has been betrayed by one of her own and now she's going to the undersea so literally forgot that any of this happened very curious to see what happens going forward the only thing that I really remember to be honest from this book is the ending and just what a shock it was so very curious to see how we get from under the sea to the actions near the end of the book that are going to lead us to the conclusion so I keep reading and I'll update you guys. All right, I remembered why I hate Taryn so much. How could she, how could she do this? So basically what happened is Taryn decided to use Cardin's poisoning as an opportunity to move against the crown. I mean, it wasn't her idea. I'm sure it was just Maddox, but it's interesting how things unfolded because there's a lot of moving parts to this book and I'm probably not going to be able to like summarize all of them for this video, but basically what is happening is Jude, I was like, how is she going to get back from the undersea? So she got back from the undersea by Cardin basically bargaining with Orla, the like queen of the undersea to, you know, be taken back. And Jude is supposed to be under like compulsion like she she's supposed to be glamoured or like under compulsion or whatever the fuck they call it under a, I don't know she's supposed to be controlled by Balkin who is the slighted prince of fairy he was the guy that like wanted to be the king so she's under his control we know that she's not actually under his control she goes back to the fey lands and is supposed to be convincing Cardin to I don't know basically give up the crown to Balkin like that's kind of the whole point is that instead of working with Cardin because he refuses to marry Nikasia we're gonna get Balkin on the throne instead. Things get interesting and Jude kills Balkin, doesn't tell Cardin, and Cardin accidentally lets Jude's surrogate father, Maddox, the guy that like killed her own family, he basically says you don't have to be under the control of the crown anymore, which is like a huge deal because now Maddox can move against Cardin at his will. Obviously this book is all political machinations, so I don't th think I can like sum up <laughs> all of what's going on, but basically what just happened is, you know, Cardin was poisoned by Balkin at some party and then Jude kills Balkin unseen and then Cardin, under the influence of this poison, agrees to, like I said, relinquish Maddox from his control so that way Maddox can essentially move against him. So big idiot moves, but he thought that Jude's twin sister Taryn was Jude and he was like, yeah, okay, like that makes sense. So tricky, tricky. Also Taryn's the fucking worst. So I... I guess that was real, was the real kicker. It's not even that Taryn decided to marry this guy that Jude liked in the first book. It's that she completely betrayed Jude and Jude's like hold on the court by trying to help her stepfather, whatever we're gonna call Maddox, in relation to the to the Duarte sisters. So I don't know, guys. I only have like 19 pages left, and then I'm gonna hop into Queen of Nothing. I'm so scared to be honest. Like I don't know how all of this can be wrapped up. It seems like there's so many loose ends, and I know that they're not gonna be wrapped up in the next 19 pages but like will it be wrapped up in the last book i just i don't know and i've kind of been like speeding through this a little bit just so i can get to the last book but i feel like i'm not doing any good reactions to this stuff but i'm just like this is scary <laughs> okay so <laughs> 
I finished it. It's 8 o'clock, which is actually perfect timing because I'm like set to finish this whole series by 11 o'clock p.m., which is just mind-blowing to me. Much as I had anticipated, having already read this book, Jude was basically forbidden from killing Belkin by Carden. She, I think she had like mentioned it or something. He had basically said like, please don't kill him. I, d I literally don't remember reading those words, but I do remember that upon first read of this book and she does kill Balkin, like I told you guys and he finds out whenever he has his confrontation with the Queen of the Undersea because the Queen of the Undersea is like oh my god Balkin was like the ambassador for the Undersea and you killed him and I'm upset. The cool thing is that in this standoff Cardin definitely wins and is definitely undisputedly the more powerful of the two between him and, and the Queen of the Undersea but you can tell that there's gonna be some unfinished business and, and there's a reason why he exiles Jude. So before he has his run-in with the Queen of the Undersea, decides that he is going to marry Jude, and we're not really given any reason why except for to potentially get out of the alliance between him and Nikasia, and then also to guarantee that he will stay on the throne because he had only promised Jude a year and a day of like listening to her, so his solution is like we'll marry and I will still kind of be indebted to you, but like I can still be the king. I can actually be the king for the first time because he was, you know, Jude was controlling him and, and now he's no longer controlled so it's tricky 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 because he was able to exile her for that reason because he was married to her he could exile her because she was no longer in charge of him so that was fascinating and that's obviously the cliffhanger of this book is that she is the queen of fairy but she's exiled now so she is effectively the queen of nothing no one knows that they're really married because the marriages in fairyland are just between two people and they're not a public thing really i'm interested to see what the reason is behind her exile i, I feel like it's got to be something good. What I've heard through the grapevine though is that there really is no reason for the exile of Jude, so I'm just really curious to see how angry she is and to see how much Cardin misses her and just to see how things unfold. Is the Undersea going to play a part in the third book? Is that conflict not even going to really be a thing in the third book? I just I want to know what's gonna happen because I really I, I don't know if it's going to be a continuation. I'm assuming it's not going to be. I'm assuming that the things with the Undersea, if, if they come into play in the third book, are going to be almost consequential and that there's going to be a different third conflict you know because there's an individual conflict in each of these books so very curious to see what happens i'm also curious to see if Cardin stays king when oak Jude's little brother was kind of supposed to be king in the first place. She tricked Carton into becoming king. Are we going to see Oak on the throne? I don't know. I think my theory is that the earring has something to do with what Carton is seeing from Jude. I also think that we are going to see the Undersea come back in but not be the main conflict of the third book. I also think that Jude and Carton are going to be endgame. I think those are the only like main theories that I'm going to put out there. I don't really have anything that I'm really expecting from the third book which is why I don't think I'm going to be too disappointed if it doesn't end up being like wildly good but uh, I think I'm gonna have a lot of updates for you guys for this book because I haven't already read it before this is my first time reading it I'm so scared I'm so excited but I'm scared so I'm gonna start that like I said it is eight o'clock so I have like a good three hours to really soak this next book in so okay so much to say um I think off the bat I understand why people don't like this book and or we're taken aback by the direction that the book is taking so we get to see Jude in her exile, and it's typical Holly Black. If you have read her previous series, I think you will understand the direction that she's going, why Jude is behaving the way that she is, and why she is in the human world. I think it's fun to see kind of what her job is now. I mean, she's like helping Faye in the human world. Totally makes sense. And I just like the fact that she is kind of just simmering and resentful. And I think people think that Jude's out of character in this book, and I haven't gotten that far into it. So I don't want to speak resolutely on whether or not I think Jude's acting in or out of character, but I really do think she's acting in character. I think people assume that Jude is this cunning person and while she is smart you can see by her behaviors in The Wicked King that she's still a kid and that she tries all of these scheming and all of these actions to get what she wants and ultimately she's unsuccessful because she lies so much such is the case of being human, especially in a world where you where you don't belong. Seeing her in this book kind of being even more human than she is in previous books makes so much sense and I, I don't mind that at all. Uh, people are also saying that it was too easy for her to come back into fairy. We were never really told how she could come back to fairy. Basically what happens is Taryn comes to Jude and says that she killed her husband and she needs Jude to go before the court and say, 
and act as Taryn because Taryn is someone who can be like, God, what is the word that I'm looking for? She can be influenced, you know what I'm saying? Like she be told not to lie, I guess. I don't know, what's the fucking word? I know it's in the book, but I always forget it. So she's like, hey Jude, will you go in front of Carden and basically act like me and say that I didn't kill my own husband? So that's what she does. I think people are just upset that Jude gets into the court so quickly and she gets back into fairy so quickly. But I mean, she was exiled for months and it's not as though she couldn't come back, but like, like magically, it's just that she can't come back unless she wants to fucking die. So a little bit worried because she acts as Taryn in the court and she's like looking at Carden the whole time. And when she's being questioned by Carden and he essentially asks her, could your sister have done this? Didn't your sister hate Locke? Jude says that she didn't actually like Locke and that she is in love with someone else. So I'm excited because Carden says that he wants to inspect her for charms to make sure that Taryn Jude, it doesn't have any like berries on or anything that she is being influenced and that she like is telling the truth. So he asks her back to his private chamber to inspect her. That's kind of where I'm at. I just had to pause right there because like that's a lot to take in and I'm like very nervous. I'm just, <laughs> this book, I don't know. I'm liking it. I, I don't know why people are upset. It's good. A lot has happened. <laughs> My heart. Okay, so Carden obviously realizes immediately that Jude is Jude and she's irritated and upset and Carden doesn't understand why. It's pretty cute, gotta love it, but of course their reunion is cut short as Maddox believes that Jude is Taryn, he doesn't realize that they had switched places, and he decides that he is going to, I guess not capture Taryn, but save Taryn from Carden. He thinks that Carden is trying to harm Taryn for killing Locke, which couldn't be farther from the truth, obviously. So she ends up getting captured and taken to Tomatic's camp. We're getting sort of an insight into what this book is going to be, which I didn't really, I mean, I guess I sort of saw it coming, but there is not really any beef with the Undersea anymore. I think that's pretty much wrapped up in this book. And in this book, it's mostly going to be, I assume, a conflict between Maddox and Carton because Maddox is gathering his troops and he has united with the Court of Teeth, which is another Fay court, a lower Fay court, to kind of rise up against Carden and get the throne to Oak because Oak can be easily controlled by Matic. So that's sort of where we're at. I don't know how Jude's gonna get out of this. I really just want her to escape and go find Carden and I wonder what's gonna happen. I can't see there being any sort of like big conflict to be honest with Matic and his troops. I could be wrong but I just don't think that that's going to be really the big to do in this book. So I just I don't know what the direction of this is is going to be. I'm, I'm very I'm curious. And I'm just really sad that the reunion got cut short. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. Jude is talking to my mans, the guy who imbues objects with magical powers and or crafts them, Mr. Grimson. Didn't you gift an earring to Carden when you first came to Elfheim? Okay, let's see. Let's see what my man says. I don't know how to feel. <laughs> it allowed him to overhear those speaking just outside of range, a wonderful device for eavesdropping. He laughs, that's not what you wanna know, is it? Yes, it was cursed with a word. I could turn it into a ruby spider that would bite him until he died. I mean, I guess that's interesting to know that Grimson can kill Carden if he wants, but like, I just like, what did, I just wanna know what he heard, you know? Like, what did he overhear in his eaves eavesdropping? I, I don't think, I don't think Jude ever like admits her feelings aloud, does she? But you know what? Can I just say, I'm kind of brilliant <laughs> for this being my fan theory. Low key brilliant, okay, so. I don't know guys, I have this feeling that Carden isn't going to be king at the end of this. I don't think either him or Jude are going to be on the throne. That's another theory that I have. So I'm gonna keep reading. Jude, please just get out of here. Please just go find Carden. Find out what he said on his little earring. Thanks, thanks so much. Y'all, I'm so emo. <laughs> I'm gonna insert a clip of me in 2008 reacting to the Twilight trailer right now because that's definitely like what I'm feeling right now. Oh my God. Now that you've seen that. Jude basically escaped. She found a way to escape. Obviously some other shit happened, but I don't really want to get into it because that's going to make this way too confusing. Jude found a way to escape from Maddox and she finds her way back to the castle and to Carden. People think that she is there to assassinate Carden, but of course she's not. And instead of clapping her in chains, he says, don't touch her. She's my wife. She is the queen. She's not in exile. I could tear up. I really could. I love, I, 
this is good which is i mean okay we're 50 percent into the book and i'm a little worried like i don't know what's gonna happen from here like is there gonna be a conflict i kind of don't care if there is to be honest like this is this isn't bad like this really i don't understand why people are upset like what, what did you want from this series this is not a super high fantasy throne of glass like crazy fantasy series that's not really what holly black writes i mean i'm happy with it you know it doesn't feel like complete fan service but it definitely is giving me what i want i love them so much i do today is a beautiful day did he really just did he say that <laughs> so jude was injured before she got brought back to carden and they had a heart to heart kind of and talked about how he wants her to be his queen and it's not said with love it's more like he appreciates jude's cunning they reached an agreement i think and it's good for now Jude and Cardin are in Cardin's room, also technically her room. One of the spies comes in and is like, get the fuck out of here. I'm about to take the stitches out of Jude. He's like, I'm not gonna leave, blah, blah, blah. And Jude says, you know, I don't know, like maybe, you'll, maybe you'd like to hear me scream. And he says, I would, and perhaps one day I will. And then he touches her hair and leaves. So like, he's not gonna watch her get her stitches out, but I wanna watch you scream. Okay, I see what you're after. Why do you guys not like this? Like, can someone just tell me like why, why we're not loving this? Come on, it's good. I'm on chapter 19, page 166. More than halfway done, people. And I'm loving it. There's nothing to be mad at. There's really not. I mean, I guess I get it because it's not a super high action book and there's not a ton of things going on, but I think pieces are being wrapped up and that's really all that I can ask for from a book. It doesn't feel rushed to me. I, again, I don't want to speak too soon because I'm only halfway done with it, but I'm really not unhappy. Like, I'm, I'm kind of liking it. I don't know. Yo, what? <laughs> what? Okay. Um, I'm getting a little flustered, so I'm on page 202. Things are getting steamy. Clothes have been taken off. Wow. Wow, I did not expect it to go this way. I don't know if they're gonna get freaky. I, I feel like I need to keep reading, but I'm scared. I just feel like I had to get back on camera and like tell you guys. Also, this camera angle is kind of a mess. Okay, is that better? That's better. She got naked and then kneeled before him and asked if this is how he pictured her surrender. Okay, calming myself. I'm calming, I am calm, I am collected. I'm gonna keep reading. Okay, oh wow. Um, okay, okay, uh, we're reading. I mean, you can't, you can't be mad at that. Like, you can't be mad at that. I'm just like, I'm literally shell-shocked. Like, I didn't think she would go there, but she did, and I'm just so here for it. Like, it definitely fucked, so. Go the market, go the market. I stay winning, okay? I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm literally not mad. I only have 100 pages left of this book. Kind of nothing has happened, but like, I'm, I'm truly and sincerely not mad. Like, how could you, how could you be mad at this? Also, I will say, I think a lot of people say that Jude is out of character in this and she's less scheming and whatever. I think there's like a few reasons for that. I think she's been in the human world for too long. And I also think that a lot of her actions in the first two books are not reactionary. They are proactive. She's on the offensive. She is the one that's scheming. She gets fucked over in the end of The Wicked King. Are we really expecting Jude to be making power moves? She's upset, she's been betrayed, and she's just kind of doing the best that she can with what she's given, and I don't understand how that's out of character for her. I, I think if anything, it's it's very in character, and like I said, not a kid, but she's young, and she's just trying to navigate through a kind of complex fucking political system. I don't know. I just, I don't, how can you be mad at this? How can you be mad at this? I wanted the earring thing. I wanted them to be end game and it's clear that that's gonna happen. They fucking fucked. This isn't PG, wow. Yes. Are you being a rascal? Mm -hmm. Um, okay. I loved it. Like every second of it. I know, I know, I know, I know. It wasn't perfect and I can understand why a lot of people would be disappointed in it, but it's exactly what I wanted. I felt all of the characters were completely in character. I liked the way that things progressed. I don't think things were quite as complex as previous books, but I do think that there was a certain level of complexity to what happened. And I completely disagree with the claim that the whole snake subplot was in any way a cop out or dumb. 
I don't know. What I've been seeing from a lot of people is that they feel like Holly Black could have gone in a bunch of different directions and they don't like the way that she handled it. At the end of the day, it's her story, right? And like she gets to kind of decide what she wants to do. I didn't have anything dreamed up in my head on really what I wanted to happen. Literally just cared about the earring and cared about Jude Carden being endgame, both of which came into fruition in this book. And I just, I don't know, I think it worked. I didn't feel like the pacing was weird. I didn't feel like this should have been longer in any way. I mean, I would have liked a, a few more maybe like Jude Carden moments because like that's who I am as a person but I liked this. I don't think that this was a poor conclusion to the series. I wish I could really put into words why I feel that way, but I think I kind of did it along the way just showing you guys that like I do think the characters behaved like they should. I, I think that the plot worked. I don't think it was perfect and I think it could have gone in, in different directions, but I think trying to introduce new plot lines in this book would have just been more confusing. The Wicked King was very complicated. The only thing that I think could have been done a little better is us seeing more from the undersea plotline in The Wicked King because we know that Cardin eventually like solves that problem but beyond like signing a treaty in this book I guess like we're hinted at the fact that he signed a treaty with Queen of the Undersea and everything was fine. I didn't feel like things were completely wrapped up in that regard, but I do like the way that the storyline with Maddox was handled. The culmination of the plot worked for me. I just, it, it was not lackluster. I don't understand what all the complaints are about this book. I think with the conclusion, it's really hard to please everyone. I think this, this was good. <laughs> I especially enjoyed the epilogue when everybody's in the human world. We get to see Cardin in the human world and kind of the interactions and how the story at the end of the day is about family, right? Because, you know, we see Maddox's treatment of the girls and I mean, that's, I like that the ending really came full circle because you get to see them in the human world again. They were snatched from the human world. Now they still have connection to it. So it just, it worked. It really worked. I'm this is still uh, to this day one of my favorite trilogies. Um, I am glad that I enjoyed it so much. I'm glad that I can put these books on my list for sure of my favorite fantasies, especially young adult fantasies. I'm sad that it's over. I fucking love Holly Black so much. I really love all of her books. So that, I mean, that's pretty much all I can say. <laughs> I'm sorry that this vlog wasn't more cohesive. I think had I not read the first couple of books prior to this video, it would have been a little bit more cohesive. So don't be scared of this series. Hopefully the series will like get better over time, but it's just going to be me reading series. But like I said, hopefully with more like explanation and actual vlogging, but that's pretty much it. I loved filming this. I can't believe I read over 900 pages in a day. <laughs> like I'm kind of proud of myself. That's kind of a big accomplishment, but I need to edit this. It's like midnight now. I'm so tired and I just want to get this up for you guys. So um, yeah, love you guys so much and until next time.